Hey y'all, it's Callie and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. Uh, it was a pretty good reading month. It started out kind of slow. I've done so much traveling. I've been home for six days total in the whole month of June. It is currently July 1st. So I didn't spend a lot of time at home. So there was a lot of audiobook and ebook reading. This month I finished a total of 23 books, 9 audiobooks, 9 ebooks, and then 5 physical books. So it was a pretty good reading month. I enjoyed a majority of what I read. And yeah, let's hop right into it. The first book I finished this month was the audiobook for The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a really, really popular story all about our main character, Star, who witnesses her best friend being shot and killed by a police officer in their town. This causes a lot of contention in their town between law enforcement and the people of color community. It is a very big issue in our current society and a very hot topic and the book handled it really well and brought a lot of new perspectives that I personally do not get not as a white person so it was very interesting and informative to see and hear those things. The audiobook was absolutely fantastic and I would highly suggest. Then I finished the ebook for Belly Up by Ava Darrows which is all about our character who finds herself pregnant after a one night stand at a party and it's all about her life. I believe if I remember correctly she is Latina but don't quote me on that. She is a person of color. I can't remember. I've read so many books since then that I can't tell you exactly but it was just overall a really cute story. I just wanted a little bit of a contemporary romance and that is exactly what I got. She of course ends up meeting some new friends at a new school and finding friends even when she thinks she won't because she is pregnant and it was just such a sweet cute little story and I believe I gave it three out of five stars. I forgot to tell you guys but I gave The Hate You Give 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then this month I have finished an ebook series by Melissa McClone. Can't remember the name of the series, but it includes Fiance for the Night, The Wedding Lullaby, Love on the Slopes, and A Little Bit Engaged. And I really enjoyed all four books. I gave each of them 3.5 out of 5 stars. They were just sweet little romances, exactly what I wanted at the time. Just something quick, fast, something that would keep me engaged the entire time and suck me in. And that is exactly what I got. And while I really enjoyed each of them, the reason they weren't rated higher was because they were companion novels and the way that they were connected was very obvious and very forced towards the end where it just didn't seem to fit in terms of the characters being added in from the past books. And that just kind of was bugging me a little bit but other than that overall they were pretty good average romance reads. They were just a lot of fun, quick and easy. A few of them had different like workplace romances and sports romances and it was just overall a lot of fun. Then I finished the audiobook for Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is a chunk of a book. This was surprisingly interesting. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. And when I give books like this four out of five stars, it's different than giving like a Shadowhunters book four out of five stars because I counted this as like a classic. A classic, I classify any book that I receive from someone that I'm not really interested in, so some historical fictions and some older books that are technically classics and while this one is not considered a classic, it's not a traditional book that I would just see and pick up. But I still ended up really enjoying it. It was really surprising. This takes place and follows characters in the 12th century and it is so surprisingly fantastic. I listened to the audiobook which was the only way I was going to be able to get through this huge book. But it was surprisingly fun and it follows a few different characters and of course they end up coming together and crossing paths 
but not all at the same time and not all of them in one place necessarily and the one thing I do have to caution is it is set in the 12th century and so there are a lot of things that we would find problematic today so if you're uncomfortable with anything that is pretty obvious or just if you want a heads up let me know and I can let you know but it definitely had its issues but overall it was just so fabulous and just so much fun which you wouldn't think but it was so cool because Partially, I was listening to the audiobook while we were in France, and so this has some locations that are in France, so it was really cool also seeing buildings that were built during the time where we follow a builder and then seeing buildings made then. It was a really cool connection and it helped me enjoy it even more. Then I finished the audiobook for A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I also really enjoyed this one. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. It was so much fun. It follows our main character as she's growing up in the slums of Brooklyn in the early 1900s. I believe like the break of the century, so like 1908 is a time period that occurs during the book and it just shows her growing up and the struggles her family has to endure and it is just so fabulous. I really enjoyed it. I loved the audiobook. It was really good and it was interesting seeing some of the issues that were really unexpected for during this time period. I would highly suggest if you're looking for something that is historical fiction while also being a slice of life story. It was just fabulous. There wasn't any sort of one big plot line other than her life and it follows her I believe until her late teens, early 20s. Don't quote me on that, but I just really enjoyed seeing her childhood and it was a lot of fun. Then on the plane ride home I finished the audiobook for what to Say Next by Julie Buxbaum. I absolutely loved this one. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was so much fun. We follow our two main characters, one girl who is struggling with the death of her dad and a boy who is on the autism disorder spectrum and the ways that they kind of start to connect kind of through her dad and just overall just connect in general and find that sometimes you don't have to know what to say next and sometimes being with that right person, your best friend or your significant other, you just do know what to say next and it was just so fabulous and so light and so fun. I loved every second of it. I just, it was so sweet and so wholesome and so much fun. I loved getting to see the perspective of our male main character who is on the spectrum but he's high functioning and he says that and he was interested in psychology and it was so fun seeing his quirks and the way that he and his family interacted and dealt with everyday life. Then I finished the audiobook for Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one once again 4 out of 5 stars. This was another classic that I ended up really really enjoying. This is like a mix of contemporary with a little bit of a mystery to it but it also is taking place a long time ago. It was so really intriguing. I surprisingly don't remember a lot about like what actually happened in the end. I wasn't paying close enough attention, but that's on me. But I really enjoyed it. The character development was so intriguing and just seeing the way that they lived their everyday lives and how everything unfolded was just so insane and I really enjoyed it. It was all about our main character who ended up finding this man in Monte Carlo and marrying him and then he takes her back to his home estate and he she then finds out that he had a wife Rebecca who died drowning and she Rebecca really loved boating and that kind of thing and so it's kind of mysterious how she died boating because she loved it so much and our main character kind of tries to live up to the ghost of Rebecca and how she acted and what she did and it was so thrilling and so much fun and it was really cool. I've heard really great things about it and I would definitely agree this was a super fun read. 
Then I finished a, another quick little romance ebook, Just Past Two by Elia Winters. I'm pretty sure I gave that one a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it, but once again, it wasn't the best book in the world. This one had a main focus on the steamy things and it definitely was like the main focus. Like the plot line was about that. So just letting you know. It's very adult, very mature. I really enjoyed it. It was so intriguing. I hadn't read a book with that kind of storyline and those characters. This is a polyamorous story, I believe that was how that would be how you classify it. I'm not 100% sure, but it was so interesting and kind of like almost exactly a slice of life kind of trying to figure out the main characters have been married for a while and they are trying to spice up their life. They don't necessarily feel like they would divorce if they didn't, but they are kind of looking for a little bit more in their marriage. Then after reading it for what felt like forever, I finally finished Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. I loved this. 5 out of 5 stars. All of my favorite characters came together and their dynamics with each other was just so much fun. The development of some of our characters was amazing to see. This was just so fabulous. I loved the plot line. I can't even imagine what's going to happen next, which is the best way to feel is not knowing what could happen. I know that people will die and I don't know who because I love everyone. If the good guys, of course. And then it's just so good. I can't wait to read the next one, but I'm going to take a break because it did take me almost an entire month to read Empire of Storms. So I'm going to take a break before I read Tower of Dawn. But I'm really looking forward to it because it was so fabulous and I loved the characters and I kept wanting to read even though I could only find time for small bits and pieces. I did keep reading and keep reading and keep reading. So I was intrigued the entire time and when I'm, it takes me a long time to read a book, I usually lose interest pretty quickly but I didn't with this one and that's what I absolutely loved about it. Then I finished the audiobook for Cress by Marissa Meyer, book three in the Lunar Chronicles. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four out of five stars. I just really loved our new character Cress and the way that she was incorporated into our storyline and the characters we know and love. And I feel like part of my appreciation was that we saw a little bit less of Scarlet and Wolf as a main focus because I didn't love them as much as the other characters and kind of getting to see those characters again and how they're all interacting together kind of like Empire of Storms. It's just really fun seeing the characters that you've seen on their own and learned to love on their own and then coming together and seeing their dynamics together and how much fun that is and how they clash and the issues that pop up. This book was so much fun and I'm currently listening to the audiobook for winter and loving that one even more than I loved Cress and Scarlet and even Cinder. It's just so much fun seeing all of these characters coming together for a common goal. It's just a blast. Then I finished the ebook for Play a Game With Me. Can't remember the author off the top of my head. This was yet again just a cute little romance story. It was fabulous. I believe this one was an e-arc that I had from NetGalley. It was once again just a steamy novel. I, I love them so much. I find myself reading them more than I should, but that's okay. They're still books. They're still great. The authors are still, should still be supported. So I definitely loved that and can't remember much about it off the top of my head, but I remember loving it and giving it four out of five stars. Then I finished The Fixes by Owen Matthews. This was such a strange book. I had no idea what it would be like and because I had picked this up in last summer and never read the description, I didn't read anything, I just looked at it. And this was insane. It was pretty much rich kids trying to be vigilantes but epically failing because they're teenagers and don't always know what's necessarily right or wrong in terms of the morally gray things. 
very morally gray throughout the entire story, but it was so cool and so weird. And I finished it in two days because it was so crazy. I read this much of the book in one day. And I'm not mad. Like, the chapters are so short that it just makes it zoom by. This is almost 500 pages and there are 365 chapters. So it is a very quick read. It just follows our main character, Eric, as he's kind of sucked in to this group of vigilante students who are trying to do things for the greater good, but not always. And of course, they keep continuing down the path. The things they're doing, they call fixes, trying to fix society, and they progressively get worse and worse. And it's crazy. There's jail, there's death. It was insane. I really, really enjoyed it. Surprisingly, I gave it a solid three and a half stars. There were definitely some issues with it because I can't say a lot, but I felt like the gay representation in this was not as good because it just felt convenient. I can't say a lot because I am not LGBTQ, but that's how it felt to me. Don't like be offended or anything. Make your own opinion. It was still really weird, really crazy. I would suggest it maybe. Who knows? Then I finished the audiobook for Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I really really enjoyed this one. It was such a sweet story. I have watched the movie in the past but it was a few years ago and I didn't remember all of the details so it was definitely new and refreshing to read this one because while I remembered some details I didn't remember enough so it still felt like a brand new story and I definitely kind of didn't remember the ending at all but I kind of remembered it a little bit but this follows our main character who is very very sick and it's to the point where she has to stay in her house all of the time because there's filtered air and things that she are is very allergic to her immune system is very very weak so she has to stay in her house all of the time and never leave all that she can do is look out the windows. She feels content with her life until a boy moves in next door and kind of opens her eyes to the outside world and makes her wonder what else is out there for her as she starts to fall in love with him. And things unravel. It gets crazy, unexpected, so much fun, such a quick read. It was just a great time. Then I finished Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. This is a collection of short stories that take place in the world of Red Queen. Some of them take place afterwards, some of them take place before. There are also some purple pages which include a lot of history of Norda in terms of the land and the beginnings of the government and not necessarily a story set in the world. And it was really unexpectedly fabulous. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved seeing more of the things wrapped up from the end of the Red Queen series. I kind of felt a little unsatisfied with the ending. It seemed too convenient and not wrapped up enough for me. But I absolutely loved this. It wrapped up some of those things that I wanted to see. And it just gave me more insight into the world and made me even more intrigued. I really enjoyed this. I just kind of got it and figured I would read it right now to just get it out of the way. I don't love Love the Red Queen series, but I liked it enough to continue on with the entirety of the series. And I'm so glad I did because this was so good and so worth it. If you don't love Love the Red Queen series, I would definitely suggest picking this up through your library of some way, getting the ebook. I would suggest this. Then I finished Right of Way by Lauren Barnhold. This was so much fun. I gave this one four out of five stars. This is a fun road trip story about our two main characters who previously were dating, but very long distance. She lives in Massachusetts and he lives in Florida and she was there for Christmas and they started a relationship and then they all of a sudden broke up and they're both pretty heartbroken about it and then she comes back for a family wedding in the summer 
and it's all about them then surprisingly going on a road trip together and the ways that they kind of reconnect and figure out what went wrong when they were dating. It was so fun. There's a dog and he's part of what brings them together, which was one of the best parts ever. He's such a sweet dog and he was such a good boy. So adorable. But this had really interesting family dynamics and really complicated family dynamics at the same time. It was so much fun. It was just a quick, easy, fun summer read. It takes place over the summer, which definitely helps out. It was just such a fun read. Then I finished the audiobook for The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chachki. I really ended up enjoying this one. I gave it four out of five stars. I couldn't help but while reading it, comparing it to Six of Crows. I enjoy them each separately, but if I had to choose one, I would definitely go with Six of Crows because while this one was super intriguing, part of the intrigue in the description for me was that it took place in Paris in the past. And then it didn't really refer to a lot. There was only one main thing that it referred to, which was the Universal Exposition, or however you would, Exhibition? The World Fair that took place in Paris during that time was a big location and place that they spent a lot of time, but that was it. You didn't really see a whole lot about Paris during the time period or locations during that time period in general. But overall, it was still so much fun. I really loved the characters. They were so easy to connect to and so much fun. And I still really enjoyed the story and cannot wait for the second. Then I finished Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve to Colt. And I ended up really enjoying this one. It is really weird. It's it, from based on the cover and also Goodreads, it seems like a paranormal fantasy and I wouldn't classify it as any sort of fantasy. It's definitely just paranormal. There is witchiness and seances and it's got some witchy vibes for sure and it was super fun but I would not classify this as fantasy. We follow our three main characters, Wink, Poppy, and Midnight, and it kind of follows them in this almost whimsical story. It is very quirky, very weird, and not afraid to go out and say it like it is. And I really enjoyed that. It is a super short read. I really enjoyed it. I read this one in two days as well. It was super creepy, super fun. You never knew it was gonna happen. And I really appreciated that about this book. Then I finished the audiobook for The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I read this book over the span of a month and a half. I read the ebook and then read a little bit of it physically and then listened to the audiobook. I definitely preferred the physical over anything else. I just chose to read the audiobook and I enjoyed it, but it didn't give me the emotional connection to the characters like everyone else seemed to have. While I enjoyed the story and I loved all the plot points and I could appreciate the ending and almost cried, I didn't because I had such a hard time getting through it. It was really lovely. The story is just so heartbreaking and so just emotional and amazing and I would highly suggest this. This follows a girl in World War II Germany as she is trying to grow up and she is living with these foster parents and they end up taking in a Jew at one point and it's all about just the struggles and the things that they go through during this really difficult and really weird time considering that they're in Germany instead of someone who is not and so they don't know a lot about what all is going on and but they it's really interesting you just have, kind of have to read it and find out for yourself but it was absolutely fabulous then i finished the ebook for anne of the island by ellen montgomery i really really enjoyed this one this is my favorite one so far in the anne of green gables series i'm gonna give it five out of five for a, for a classic 
because I absolutely loved it. In the previous books, I didn't really love Anne as much because she seemed very childish and immature and I didn't really enjoy reading about that. But in this one, she is in her later teen years and into her early 20s and kind of navigating college and boys and it was so much fun and also friends are a really big part of this one. It was so much fun, so lovely. I know who she ends up with, which is part of what pushed me through the end because I just wanted to find out how it was going to wrap up, how she was going to end up with the one guy I knew she was. And it was just so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I read the last little bit pretty quickly. In the last few days I read quite a bit of it at once and I just really loved it and almost can't wait to read the next one. And lastly, I read the ebook for The Troublemaker Next Door by an author that I don't know, Marie Hart, maybe? Maybe. Don't quote me on that. It was a romance ebook that was available through my library. I absolutely loved it. This is a series about the McCrane brothers, maybe that's their name. It's a mix C something. I can't remember, but. Oh my gosh, was this good. I highly, highly, highly suggest. The characters are so complex and their stories are so intricate and it's just so lovely and to see them develop individually and together was just so much fun. It was such a quick, easy read that I finished it in one day and I would highly suggest it was so much fun. I really, really loved it. I cannot wait to continue on with the series as soon as they come available through my library. Alrighty guys, those were the 23 books I read the in the month of June. It was a really good reading month considering that May was my worst reading month of the year so far. I still really enjoyed a lot of the books I read. I didn't enjoy only a few and I just had a great time reading. A lot of it was audiobooks and ebooks and that's perfectly fine. But this month I'm I'm working on the TBR. It's going to happen. I'm going to buy no books or as little as possible and I'm going to crack down on my TBR. It's going to happen. Hopefully. I keep saying that, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. If you liked this one, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.